Um, it's really lovely to speak to you and uh, I'm so excited about Stand By Me for you. When, when did you first germinate the idea for the project? Um, probably a couple of months ago. I was uh, thinking about the fact that uh, A, it's my 50th anniversary in the, the industry right now and it's the 60th anniversary of the release of Stand By Me at the end of October. Um, we, we're all aware, aren't we, of the, the terrible problems that the music community is suffering at the moment with the impact of COVID, that young artists, grassroots community is suffering probably more than almost anyone. I, I think we're all affected, obviously, but the grassroots music community have got it particularly tough. No venues are open. Uh, the whole infrastructure that supports that musician out on stage has been affected by the lockdown in the last six months. So it's not just the musicians themselves. It's every you know. It's the roadie. It's the it, it's the person on the sound desk. It's the lighting rig. It's 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 everyone. So what could we do to help them? I'm sitting here in in the studio under the apple tree, and uh, of course it's been quiet all summer. The musicians that normally would be coming in here to do their sessions have not been able to, to come. I've been in isolation. It's been such a difficult time. So we thought, well, if we can utilize sort of under the apple tree, do something under that umbrella. Right. So it's the 60th anniversary of Stand By Me. It's the 50th anniversary. Let's, let's put all these elements together. I'm also the, uh, an ambassador for Help Musicians. Right, uh, yeah. the charity that supports music so yeah we we got in touch with them so we got this idea you know do you think it's something that could help um and everybody said yes 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 this is good <laughs> so then we started reaching out to musicians uh friends of mine basically i composed a letter which we sent by email to loads of our friends and one by one, they started coming back and saying, yes, we'd love to be involved. Wow. So Miles, my son Miles, created a backtrack uh, with uh, Leland Scar and, um, you know, <laughs> and it just the names that we, the, and, and then we began to get uh, contributions in from the artists that we'd approached. So as you listen to the beginning of the track, um, well, first of all, you hear me on triangle, of course, the, <laughs> the most important uh, element of the whole mix. <laughs> but then, um, so, so, you know, you've got the opening sequence uh, with Leland playing bass. You've got, uh, you can hear Rick Wakeman on piano in the background. Uh, Mark Knopfler has produced a really lovely guitar riff. Right, the yes. first voice you hear is that of Jimmy Allen, yeah. uh, you know, the yeah. uh, black country star in the States. Uh, so you hear Jimmy Allen was with the first line, then Roseanne Cash, right. uh, and then and then variously, you know, as you go through people like Peter Frampton, Kiki D, Ward Thomas, The Shires, Robert Vincent, um, Richard Thompson, it, it, you know, and a lot of our younger artists that we love so much um, are on the record as well. So to have watched and listened to it all come together has been an absolutely unbelievable experience, and it's sounding beautiful. I can honestly say it is. That's awesome. One of the things I wanted to ask you, and I thought this about the Band-Aid project at the time, how do you choose who sings what? Well, my, we got everybody to sing it all. Yeah. Okay, so then, so we've got all the vocals all the way through from everyone. Wow. I think possibly the only exception to that is, is Paul Rogers, who, who just did a couple of the choruses. Yeah. Um, but everybody else gave us the whole vocal. So on faders, you, you can bring people in and out or, or you can layer them in, in the choruses. So Mars and I had the most amazing afternoon here yeah. last week where, you know, you're isolating voices yeah. and just hearing their voice. Um, I tell you, Jimmy Allen, of, of all the contributions, and I don't want to, you know, specifically pick somebody out, but I'm going to with Jimmy Allen because... When we got his vocal, it just absolutely blew us away. Yeah. He's just got the whole feeling and spirit of the song um, so beautifully. Right. So yeah. that's why we wanted his to be the first voice. And his is also one of the last voices you hear right at the end. Right. Um, and we used his voice as a guide voice for everyone else. So then Mars and I were, were sitting in the studio here, sort of mixing and matching, and in particular with the choruses, layering. And there's a couple of beautiful moments. I mean, 
the, going into the string section, we've got a, a run of male voices. I think, um, uh, I'm trying to think, there's a, um, I can't remember exactly who, who runs, but there's about three or four male voices in a row, uh, including Peter Frampton and Leo Sayer. Yes. So Leo Sayer's vocal is fabulous too. And then we follow that uh, with Ward Thomas and the Shires in a, yeah. in a sort of bank. It's stunning. I mean, I'm even getting goose pimples thinking about it now. <laughs> it really is. And because uh, we've got the strings in, in the middle section with Duane Eddy playing guitar yeah. up behind. And ah, it, it's, uh, it, in a funny sort of way, it all seemed to kind of fall together. Yes. Mars and I didn't really have to do a lot of work with it. It just seemed to have its own life somehow. When, when you feel like that about a project, that you've enjoyed putting together and it seemed effortless as well you know you're onto the right thing then as well don't you everybody seems to feel certainly miles and i do that it's touched by some kind of magic yeah. honestly uh when you think that, that there are 55 musicians on it all together mm -hmm. and therefore it, you could say right okay is it going to sound cluttered no it doesn't it, it's it, it everybody fits somehow yeah. I think, you know, the song has got such a power to it that somehow it got into people's blood as they were playing. Um, so it's very, very subtle. And although it's a big sound now, mm. much bigger than the original record, mm. everything fits. And at the same time, because Miles is so good at what he does, you can hear everyone. I mean, literally everyone. Yes. Uh, my friend in Nashville, Eric, Eric Brace, put a... Uh, uh, We've got his vocal on the first chorus and he was convinced before we made the record that he, his voice would be lost in amongst everyone else's yeah but um uh, mars has matched him with kiki d right and the two of them it just it just absolutely works That's so cool. yeah no it's it's uh, <laughs> it, it's fantastic and and the choice of the song is so apt as well not only for its anniversary but i think 75% of the population have three songs in their head all the time and one is a wonderful world one is stand by me and one is the lion sleeps tonight I think they are everybody's like jukebox songs so we all know stand by me yes and it's had several lives hasn't it you know obviously the original uh, when it came out in 61 but then it was a number one in 86 I think it was you know yeah. uh, it's been covered by a lot of people through the years and there's a particularly wonderful version of it by a, a, a worldwide group of musicians called Playing for Change. John Lennon recorded a version of it too. And so it is a song certainly that's, that's stuck with me through the years. It seems so natural because the message of the song is so warm and caring and kind. I think that's really yes. you know, a very, very important part of it in this day and age. So. You know, I, I think it's sort of uh, stand by me, but six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what can people do to help support? It's out on October the 27th. Yes, you can pre-order it. Um, there's a GoFundMe campaign. Really? Uh, GoFundMe.com uh, forward slash stand by me 2020. There's also loads of details on my site, my relaunched website, uh, right. which is bobharris.org. Um, and the hashtag uh, Stand By Me 2020 will take you to all the postings on Instagram and on Twitter. Wow, that's brilliant. We'll, um, we'll get right behind that on Lyric. I think it's a wonderful project. There's just one aspect, one other aspect of it too, that, that really is very, very exciting. Um, one of my great friends is Morgan Howell, who's also known as Supersized Art. And he creates these amazing, giant reproductions of old singles, 3D reproductions. Oh, yes. And he's got my copy of Stand By Me, and he's creating one of these big uh, pieces of art uh, that's going to exactly reproduce my single. Wow. So uh, we're going to auction that as part of the uh, whole fundraising process. It, it's beautiful. I mean, he, if you have a look on Instagram, my Instagram, um, uh, he's he's posted um, the most recent photograph of where he's got to ah. with the work so far, and it looks glorious. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna I'm gonna repost his post 
um, at the end of my interviews today. So if you check my Instagram, it's at Whispering Bob, you'll, you'll, you'll see the progress on there. Brilliant. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited for th this whole project. It just feels like there's so much buzz around it and for such a good cause as well. Well, the, one of the things I have posted is uh, a piece of um, a message that Darius Rucker sent yeah. me from Nashville, just saying how honoured he is to be part of it all. Um, and it's beautiful, just that, you know, Darius, his heart is so much in it. So we're, yeah, we're, we're really, really thrilled. That's great, Bob. And it's uh, lovely to speak to you. And I'm sure we'll speak again and, and talk again before the October the 27th. But we'll, we'll plug that 27th and the Stand By Me hashtag and all that for you. It's, uh, it's wonderful that you're doing this. That's brilliant. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.